forza Mi Mario Yahoo Woohoo Let's go Let's have fun Nintendo Oh yeah All right, what is up, guys? It is your boy Chris and your man Noah, and we are the hosts of Nintendo Bros. Um, it is great to be here on this great Friday morning in the month of October. Uh, it is our last October show before we launch into the great month of November. So it's great to be here as always. Josh is on his way. He's actively um, in his car. He's driving here right now. Um, and he's the guy who's got the music for today. So for the first part of the show, we don't have any music right now, but we will have music for the show when he gets in. And he's actually calling me right now, and I can't answer the phone. Uh, but so here we go. Noah, how are you doing this day? I'm um, doing better than last week when I, when I was uh, not feeling it. Yeah, uh, last Friday morning, I was. It was abysmal. I I felt awful, <laughs> and I and I know I like I texted you at like eight forty or eight fifty or something. I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna be on the show today. <laughs> I, I, oh, it was it was I was a mess that morning. And we were able to kind of cover it, so it wasn't too bad. Good, it's I'm nice. So we were we were able to to cover it with uh, with you being out of out of sorts, but mm-hmm. that's okay. Um, so the first part of the show, we're going to kind of fill in with a little bit of updates on what's going on with us in terms of the show, uh, just so that everybody's up in the loop. Um, we do know, we are aware that the last couple weeks of shows have not been put up on YouTube yet, um, and it's not our fault. We've been trying to get them up. It's been it's more on YouTube side of things. So what's going on is YouTube uploaded it. The upload was fine, but they couldn't process it for whatever reason. Um, so that kind of thing has just kind of been a bit of an issue. Uh, and give me one second, Noah, if you want to talk about um, how our talk about our endo- not being endorsed by Nintendo and everything, and kind of yeah. talk about a couple of things. Um, actually, never mind. I will just continue talking. <laughs> uh, do 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 do. So, yeah, the. The uh, this week's this week's show is going to be up on YouTube with your other words pretty soon, and we're going to keep that stuff uh, up and up to snuff uh, with everything. And Josh is actively trying to get in because um, <laughs> the door was shut uh, by somebody. <laughs> All of the letters that I'm getting as text <laughs> right now is just absolutely <laughs> it's it's funny, but it's not because it's like. Poor guy. When, we're missing a host that's here. All, that's all right. He'll, he'll get in here. Do, like a. Uh, okay, I know. I'm sending him the the, <laughs> the phone. Send him the code. Just there. Just to remind Sam. everyone, we are not officially endorsed or sub or um um we are we are not spokespeople for Nintendo in any way, shape, or form. All of our opinions are our own, and uh, thank goodness for that, because I d- I don't know. If I'd be able to say positive things about certain games that they've made recently, um, Federation Force comes to mind. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> yeah, that that's one thing that. Uh, that the beauty of having our own opinions and not having to uh, sell out, I guess. Yeah, I mean we 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 are we don't want to be like completely advertiser unfriendly. Jeez, that door creaks so loud. <laughs> Um, hello, Josh. Right. It's a good thing. It means Josh is here. Yes. Uh. Yes. Hello, Josh. I'm sorry. The guy before us kind of shut the door. Yeah. I I left the door cre- uh, cracked for you. I really did, but I guess oh, I he... believe you. I saw him in the hallway, and I'm like, oh no, there oh. it goes. There <laughs> goes everything. Seven, oh, well. eight. Oh That's boy. That's fine with me, though. Yes. Okay. I got my copy of the itinerary for the show. We officially have an itinerary for the show. Um, I kind of just we kind of rolled through the introductory stuff. Here's the cable. We have 12 feet of cable now for oh. the for the music. So you, get that plugged in. It's all ready to go. All you got to do is hit play. Alrighty. Alrighty. So we do have a lot of news to cover, as well as something very important that happened uh, today and is happening today. And we'll talk about that later um, as we go along. And 
There we go. Music. Woo! Alrighty. So, <clears throat> first on the list, we have a new 3DS design for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So, the SNES mm -hmm. design, they're bringing out a new 3DS design for that. Um, so, that's going to be coming out on November 27th. It's going to be $199.99, so typical fare for those types of... Uh, those types of things, it's a pretty standard price. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the counterpart to the Euro Europe and the Europe's sup uh, SNES and Japan's Super Famicom, mm -hmm. a new 3DS's. So, yeah, that's pretty cool seeing a new design. Glad uh, everyone's still up with that uh, SNES hype from mm -hmm. the SNES Classic Edition, which, speaking of which, um, the SNES Classic actually outsold all the major major consoles in September, which I find pretty funny. To be <laughs> just just the thing that it's like, well, okay, Nintendo, you can still. It, I mean, even the SNES even so outsold the Switch, um, but the Switch actually did uh, outsell the PS4 and Xbox One in September in terms of units. Uh, so I mean, Nintendo's doing pretty good, I'd say. Um, yeah, they're in a. It looks like they're in a really really good spot. And uh, yeah, the. <laughs> SNES Classic did indeed sell out all of their units, surprising absolutely no one. <laughs> <laughs> Good old uh, Nintendo uh, not giving us enough, but that's true. oh well, it's it's not like it's not going to be coming out again. So hopefully, oh, well, hey, they said that about the NES Classic, and well, well here we are. Well, we got to just wait until next year that's to right. get something like that. So we'll we'll see about that. Uh, so, and then we've got the f Switch 4.0 update, which we've, uh, which has been out for, uh, what is it, a week, uh, week and a half a now? Week, maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe, um, near the beginning of the week, I think, is when it came out. Yeah, it's it's pretty recent. Uh, and because of it, Breath of the Wild is most trending with Nintendo's hashtag, uh, and that goes along with the sharing online. So, of course, they added the video uh, capture feature with Update 4.0, um, of course, only a few of the games are mostly Nintendo products, so that's ARMS, uh, Splatoon 2, Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8, and Breath of the Wild, where you can grab 30 seconds of, like, the previous 30 seconds of the gameplay that you just went through, it'll record it, save it, and then you can upload it to various socials. Um, and fu funny enough, a lot of the videos um, that are trending are pretty much Breath of the Wild, and it's just finding different ways to kill the Yiga clan members that are disguised in Breath of the Wild, but basically right after you talk to them. So basically, a lot of people would, like, freeze a lot of the metallic objects, like, shooting in one direction. So as soon as you get, so as soon as you get done talking... As soon as the conversation's over, over they're just... They That's pretty good. And, and they die. I've, I've yes. seen a couple of the clips of those, and I, I got a good chuckle out of that, most of them. That is really clever, though. I mean... But did you buy all 99 bananas first before you killed the man? Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's very true. No, I did not. I just wanted one banana. But I feel guilty about killing so many of them sometimes, so yeah. <laughs> I'll buy a banana or two. Yeah. And funny enough, Anuma still doesn't know where it is on the timeline. In an interview that he recently just had, he basically just stated that he's like, he's like well, it happens after Ocarina of Time, but... that That's so... So very that's helpful, a, but it also it that's also a lot of the timeline after Ocarina of Time though. Yeah, but it kind of makes sense because I know, and you guys are gonna cringe at this, but that game theory that that um, was put out about trying to figure out where Breath of the Wild fits in the timeline, it kind of adds to like it solidifies that theory in a way because uh, Matt Pat put it at the end of the Heroes Defeated mm -hmm. timeline, and that kind of makes sense um, in a way. So he, he did talk about how he felt like it could have been a convergence, but there just wasn't enough evidence I think other I, than them saying, oh, you know, the Hero of Twilight got the sword, and then they talked about Wind Waker a lot, because you got, you know, the... the and the Riddle were there. Riddle and, and all that. So, I mean, I need more more personally feeling. I feel that... I mean, I, I feel as it's more of a convergence. I'd be fine with that, because then we can just... Continue down with one timeline. Cause yeah, I, I, and we can take the split in three and bring it back to one. And, it, and it also that. explains how um, in Breath of the Wild, and at this point I can pretty much spoil this memory because people have played mm -hmm. the game, you have the point where um, Zelda is knighting Link, yeah. and everybody's watching, and she talks about um, she talks about Twilight, Twilight. she talks about Hero T uh, Ocarina of Time, and she talks about Wind Waker, all yeah. in the same speech. Yeah, and 
they're kind of with Wind Waker and like Twilight those Princess. Are in those are in lines. different timelines. So it kind of I kind of had my theory in a couple of shows back that we were talking about, and I kind of the the convergence actually is a better theory than mine. Mm-hmm. But that that's an aside. Uh, but in other news, with the the four point zero switch update, GameCube controller compatibility is a thing. So if you all have uh, been graced with Smash for the Wii U and you got the bundle with the GameCube controller adapter, you can pop that thing in your Switch and 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 do that and have fun. I, th- I think it I think it has to be at this point. Like the foreshadowing for Smash for Switch is so huge at this point that I don't even think it's avoidable at this point. I think. I really, really hoping that we're getting it. That's, that's one of the strongest pieces of evidence I can see for them porting Smash over to the Switch. And even if it's even if it's just a port and it's not an actual game, I would still be happy. I yeah, I'd still be infinitely happy. It would make tournament setup so much easier. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you just put a Switch dock there. You don't have to set up all the Wii U and everything. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. And you could technically have up to twelve players. Yeah. With the theory of. Uh, you know, you only really you don't get rumble, but who really cares about rumble? It's smash. You're yeah. really more about the button combinations. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. Funny enough, uh, the GameCube controller is actually you're able to play in a lot of the other games like, for Switch as well. You, so you can play <laughs> Breath, of, Breath of the Wild with it. Yep. Um, you're missing a button, but you can play Breath of the Wild. Yeah, you're just missing ZL, but. You know, hey, if, if you want to play Breath of the Wild with a GameCube controller... You just can't use your shield or target anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, that's a... Uh, um, oh, I need that for Guardian parries, though. Yeah. So. so... So I guess you're not going Guardian hunting with your GameCube controller. I, I, suppose, <laughs> I suppose not. Oh, well. So, another news kind of for the Switch. Uh, they have now an option kind of on the eShop, just like they had with the on-sale option for you know stuff on the menu. Uh, for uh, looking at all the demos that uh, are now on the eShop for the Switch. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you got a couple options different with there. They're expanding their eShop, though I wish they would still put a lot more. And Nintendo, if you're listening, you better give me G- uh, GameCube Virtual Console. I need that now that we can, you know, especially with <laughs> Yeah, 4.0, especially with, you know, yeah, with that being confirmed. It, it's one of those things, too. It's like... And they need to work on the the layout of the Switch eShop. It is just, I know, it's very cluttered. And I can, if I didn't, well, that's why know how to use like this, this search option. And like, if I wanted to look at something really fast, they need to structure it kind of like how they have the 3D eShop and even the Wii U eShop. Mm-hmm. And it's really frustrating that I can't find anything within 10 seconds. Like, especially the big games, like. Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart, Arms, Splatoon 2, like the first parties, mm-hmm. those things are 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 non-existent unless they're on like the top ten list, mm-hmm. because you've got those indie games that people have been downloading for all like all going crazy with that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and those things are populating the top ten list. So you miss the top. So the the top ten's missing a lot of the first party titles. Mm-hmm. The front page is missing a lot of the first party titles. You know, it's kind of a missed opportunity, and if they can restructure it and kind of like redo it so that you've got, because now we've got enough games on the Switch that they can do something mm-hmm. like they did with the 3DS and the and the Wii U. Yeah, I, d- it, I definitely think the the 3DS eShop is vastly more organized than the Switch eShop at the current time. Um, like, there's, it's so easy to find exactly what you're looking for, or to be introduced to new games, like new indie games. And I mean, they're doing a really good job of pushing new indie games right now. And but it's the or it just feels disorganized. And here's another thing that's missing: recommended for you. Yes. That's not on the Switch eShop, but that's on the Wii it, U eShop, and, and it's, it's on, on the 3DS, 3DS well. eShop. Yeah. And it's missing. It's kind of like that's a great feature. Uh, and they they generally do a pretty good job of recommending games to me mm-hmm. that I want to play. So. But enough bagging on the eShop. It does have a new okay. menu option. It's uh, so there's um, so the demos. So they actually have a dedicated page of all the games that have demos available for the Switch. So um, it's updated just like the on sale games option. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a nice thing. But still, we're missing a lot of integral things that just make a, a internet shop function. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's the list, the list type of a setup that they have right now is just 
it's getting to the point where there's too many games for it to yeah, be feasible. There's too much on it. Like, you can't do it anywhere. On launch, it was fine, because there was barely anything there. And so it's like, I'll scroll through the five games that are on the eShop, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you definitely need a way to reorganize um, the products that you're Like, selling. even classifying them by genre. Yeah. But ho- hopefully Nintendo will uh, do that soon. If they're doing these different updates with the different things, they're they're planning something, I guess. So mm. we'll see. So kind of on to uh, new news. Uh, me and uh, Goomba here are going to be going and seeing the Zelda Symphony next week, which is going to be pretty cool. We'll be talking about that uh, probably on next week's show. Um, we'll share her experiences and everything. Mm. So that's going to be something that we'll we'll share and. Uh, Noah, did you, you? I went. I went. Um, so when Hyrule Warriors Legends had come out, there was one down in Columbus that I that I went to. Didn't we go um, to that one? I think we did. Yeah, it was that one. So we kind of like missed we were, each we other. Were, we were there and missed each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought it was excellent. Uh, I'm kind of jealous that you guys are able to go to the one in Detroit. Um, <laughs> but then my my friend Drew invited me to go to the one in Columbus this year, oh. which is. Uh, I believe that's in two weeks, but I have uh, I have something for my student org uh, in two weeks, so I can't go, and that just bones me out. But funnily enough, when I went to the one in Columbus, I had invited this same friend, but he had to work, so he couldn't come. So it's like I guess <laughs> so. We'll it's just kind train. of like a trade off. You, you can go now. I'll I'll stay home this time. Yeah, yeah. but I, I thought it was excellent. I think you guys are, are in for a treat, especially if they're going to have. Um, Probably Breath of the Wild soundtrack oh, in there now, oh, and it's it's gonna be that's gonna be great. I'm I'm excited to hear uh, what they have in store for Breath of the Wild in terms of the symphony. Uh, turns out uh, the Zelda symphony has actually been touring for five years. I can't believe that. Mm-hmm. I remember when it first came out, hearing about it, I'm like, oh, I gotta go yeah. see that. I gotta go see that. So, because they've been to Michigan now, uh, probably about two times out of the five years. Mm-hmm. So, um. Oh yeah, the other one that I'm really excited about is uh, Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions, and that's in Grand Rapids in January, and we've got Ooh. we're going at that. Mm-hmm. Oh man, so that's gonna <laughs> be fun for that I, one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have so much fun with that one. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, uh, I just learned about this information just a little bit ago. Um, the musicians actually only really get one rehearsal with the director and everything, and it's all comprised of like the lo- uh, some local musicians as well as some of them that travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and they get the PDFs pretty much just sent to them, and then the rehearsal is just pretty much on the day of the concert that they practice all together, and they go through it for a couple hours, and then showtime, and there you go. And you know, speaking from experience, when we were down in Ohio listening to it, I I really enjoyed. It. I couldn't really, I could tell a little bit. There was a couple of missed notes here and there, mm-hmm. but overall, I was I was very happy with uh, the way that. Uh, you know they performed. It was very good. Brought brought some tears to my eyes at mm. one point during the show. So I was I'm right there with you. I'm 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 excited to go and experience that again and get a little bit of the Breath of the Wild soundtrack mm. thrown into there. Maybe, maybe we can take out Triforce Hero, Heroes and put in Breath of the Wild. I don't. I, don't, I loved I I love the Triforce Heroes portion of the concert. I don't love Triforce Heroes, Heroes okay. but I loved the the music is great. The yes, I, and that's one thing that I. You know that's why I'm like uh, a little worried about Br- Br- Breath of the Wild because it's like, what songs do they really? Well, like have? you got like Varuda, you got the yeah. Divine Beast battle themes are okay. really really good. That's Varuda true. in particular is my favorite. I don't know. I still feel like Bar- Breath of the Wild is lacking in the department of music, which I was like. <laughs> well, I mean, you've got the guard, you've got the guardian, well, the guardian theme. theme too. Yeah, that's you've really got bad. the but you've got enemy encounters. Mm-hmm. You've got the the stables. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the stable theme is so good. Oh man, what if? Oh, this would be good. They need to get an accordion. They, they might. Have, they might do it. And and just having an do the cast and, counterpoint. Yeah. Yes. The chance of that probably will. So. I don't know. We'll 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 tell you about the experience and what happens uh, during the concert. It'll be pretty fun. We'll be talking about that a lot more uh, coming up here next week. So, so this next topic is actually from a new Nintendo Direct that was dropped a few days ago, and I actually had to search for this Nintendo Direct on YouTube it was, because it was they, late at night. Well, Who they also that? created a brand new channel for the. Oh, did they finally the direct, do that? Did they finally do it's, that? Uh, called oh, Nintendo, it's called Nintendo Mobile. Yeah. 
And it, it took me a minute because I actually searched, I actually started with watching a Nintendo YouTube video, and then the thing popped up for the Nintendo UK, the mm. mobile video, and then after clicking the, the direct for the Nintendo UK for Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, then the Nintendo mobile version, which is the, the Noah version of the... <laughs> <laughs> he looks up. <laughs> I say Nintendo of America. I abbreviate it as Noah. No. Noah looks yeah. up and what? <laughs> the Noah version of uh, the video popped up on the suggested uh, videos. So I clicked that and watched that and subscribed, of course, standard fare. Mm. Um, but so th- <clears throat> a lot of information was dropped. It, I'm not really a fan of how they presented it because it like after about halfway through it started to kind of drag along, and I'm not really a fan of that type mm. of... Because they really didn't present it in a way that I personally enjoyed, That's but... because you've never played Animal Crossing. Yeah, if mean, you would have played Animal Crossing... You would sorry. understand. You would know. This was... I, I thought it was great. I thought it, it I, looked... I, I think it looks great. I watched it all last night. Like, I really like the, the yeah. concept and everything, but the way, the way it was they presented, presented it, it just is like, just like... They gave us a lot of information, but not in a, in a format that was... Useful. Not, well, like, useful, but not super like organized, I guess. Because mm-hmm. they yeah, re- they know. repeated a couple points here and throughout the video yeah. where it was just like, ah, I, I can kind of see where you're coming from, but I I don't know. As a Animal Crossing veteran, I I was just like, okay, this was in the game mode, now it's on mobile. Oh oh, we get like this. Every, like everything's yes! there properly. Yeah, yes. it feels so good. Well, and I was reading an article about this this morning. Um, you know, this game was actually supposed to come out earlier in this year. Yes. Um, but they were just bas- they basically went and redid it from scratch because they were uh, you know they they're going through developing for it and then they're like oh, this is not working out we gotta we gotta pretty much revamp everything and get going with it and yeah. so they they took their time with it which I'm fine which is kind of something that they were doing with um, the Fire Emblem mobile game is they were they were just kind of rushing into a lot of stuff so they kind of stepped back with this one and said hey we're not gonna really give you a lot of information but we're gonna take our time with this. And we're gonna make it, you know, a great Animal Crossing game for yeah. mobile. So it's something that it's like, oh, hey, I'm I'm fine with that. I Nintendo, you've always said it's better to, you know, delay a game and make yeah, it better make it than better. Yeah. send out a terrible game and because it'll be bad forever, <coughs> kind of thing. So Sonic Boom. <coughs> mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> but because that game was really rushed. Mm. Well, Sonic Boom, yeah. 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 But same story with 06. So which I own and have played. Don't do it. <laughs> you don't do soul. it, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, back to Pocket Camp. Um, you actually get to be the campsite manager in the game. So and it's kind of like New Leaf. You're, you're instead of being the mayor, mayor you're going to be the campsite manager. Um, and they kind of have a crafting feature in the game, which kind of you know helps stand it out from a lot of the other Animal Crossing games. You get to you know make a lot of these, you know, of your items, of your furniture, and, you know, any of the Id- other items, so uh, it's going to play like Animal Crossing in that aspect, um, and you're going to be able to, you know, get items by doing tasks for campers, just like, you know, in your town, you're able mm-hmm. to go and talk to people and be like, hey, this person wants an apple, well, let me go shake an apple tree and then, yeah. you know, get rewards such like that, so uh, pretty cool with that. Um, yeah, um, you also get to uh, design the campsite yourself, which I thought this is one of the uh, best features to me because I always, I'm always fr- the only thing I don't like about Animal Crossing is like kind of the lack of customizability of your town. Um, you're like, there's a couple of options for you to choose from, but basically, um, once stuff is where it is, uh, that's basically it. You can add stuff and new leaf with the uh, development projects, but um, I thought designing the whole thing was it was great. It's like finally I get to put it where I want it to be, <laughs> not it's where so it just great. loaded up. Right, much. yeah. Um, every villager has a friendship level, um, and the more you do chores and and helpful helpful things for them, find them items, uh, the more they'll come to visit. Um, so you'll have opportunity to get more things from them. So it's a it's a cycle of friendship. Always my favorite thing. Um, and also in the game there are leaf tickets, which are. Um, they're, they can be used uh, for material in place of materials that you don't have, um, and these are their microtransaction um, that they're implementing in the game. You can use 
real money to buy them, but you can also earn them in the game. So this is where Tom Nook is actually taking Tom you. Nook's taking your actually for real money this time. <laughs> he's, he's leaving he's, you an actual he's debt. Gra- he's graduated from being from just bells, yeah. bells to actual cold hard cash. Mm. Um, so Curse on to you, the Tom Nook. You're gonna <laughs> take all my money. So you've got uh, the island, a beach, a forest, and a river locale that you can uh, travel to and kind of do different things. Mm -hmm. There's different animals there, so you can befriend different people. Well, animals. They're not people. Uh, Sure, they're people. Sure. They they have feelings too, Chris. Uh, So you can also trade with the villagers. So if there's items that they have and they want an item that you have, you can trade with them and kind of get stuff that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're also able to catch bugs and go fishing, so those are kind of staples in Animal Crossing that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Well, with uh, fishing, too, uh, they kind of implemented a new feature uh, that you're going to be able to throw out a net now and pretty much get, like, a huge catch. Um, they didn't... I, I looked through it again and listened to the direct, and I think you got to use leaf tickets for that. Uh, it, it seemed that way. It seemed that way, so, I mean, it's, it's not something that you're going to be able to do every so often, So, but, I mean, even still, fishing with that net lo- looks like you're going to be getting a, a lot, lot of fish, fish yeah. so it's going to save, save, yeah, <laughs> save up some of your time there, and um, just like Animal Crossing it with any other, other game, um, time is going to pass in real time, which I, I found pretty good. I'm like, well, okay, I, I'm glad that I, you know it, that's just a minor detail. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's, that's it's, cool. a, it's important to Animal Crossing though. It's mm-hmm. always a, that's a huge thing is the fact that time is actually matched up with the real world. It helps it feel more more alive, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, in in here, you're going to be able to travel to. It's going to be called Marketplace, and that's where you're going to be uh, able to go to the shops like Timmy and Tommy uh, for your furniture, the Able Sisters for clothing, and uh, Kicks will be there for your shoes and socks. So. Uh, of course. You got all your Animal Crossing staples there. You also have the ability to design your camper, uh, both the inside and the outside, so it's a completely customizable vehicle, just like it's your own just car. Like your, just like your Animal Crossing house. Uh, and then you can get a loft in the camper, but you have to get a loan from Tom Nook to of do course. that. Which... So. Uh, <laughs> that, that's yeah. your Animal Crossing game, though. That's you have to every time. Every time you got to go and th- go to Tom Nook and say, hey... Yeah, it's some money, and Tom looks like I give you this loan. But you gotta do well, you me gotta a favor. You gotta do me this favor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so real. Tom Nook really is a mafia boss. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Um. So, um, you're gonna do your standard Animal Crossing activities: collecting and selling bugs and fish, shaking trees, hitting rocks, uh, all stuff that anyone who's played Animal Crossing for any length of time. We'll be familiar, like, sinking hours into just... I could sink hours just into fishing, like, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, Even especially, like, on the island of New Leaf. It's oh, like the you, island you is, just, is it's, so good. You're, I'm there at least for an hour at, an, at, at, you know, mm. at the least. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a lot you're going to be able to do. Um, and with your friends, you just got to show your ID, and then you'll be able to uh, go to their campsites whenever you want. And, you know, be able to kind of take inspiration from your friends and see what they got and kind of you can move it over to your campsite as well if you, you know, purchase uh, some of their items. Kind of like in New Leaf, we're able to go to other towns and kind of, you know, say, hey, I want to buy this. So you're going to be able to do that with the campers and stuff going to other people's towns, which is pretty cool. And, of course, in typical Animal Crossing fashion, you've got all sorts of different customization options for your character, so your character can literally be you, or the ideal version of you, or some different version of you, however you so choose, whatever your heart desires, Mm -hmm. that's what you can do uh, with your villager character. Um, You can also build amenities now in uh, in Pocky Camp, Camp, thank you. Uh, So things like a pool, that you can build, and those things actually are timed events, so mm-hmm. kind of in typical fashion of a mobile game, you build it, and there's a certain amount of time. You can also, word has it, that if you give Cyrus some leaf tickets, you can actually probably get that thing done faster, but that you didn't hear that from me. Sounds like Cyrus is slacking on his work most of the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just Nintendo trying to get... More money from us. Okay, <laughs> okay Nintendo. Look, we, we already it. give you our souls. Like, what more do you want from us? So, well, that's going to be pretty cool. And leaf tickets are also going to be giving you uh, honey for bug collecting and then, like, the big net for fishing. Um, and you're able to, with a leaf ticket, go to 
the quarry to go and shovel strike a bunch of rocks to get minerals to sell. So that's where you're going to be able to get your diamonds, your quartz, and all your other different Animal Crossing minerals to be able to sell and get all your bells that you need as well. So that's going to be pretty cool. And uh, you know, by completing goals, you can also get these leaf tickets in the game. So you don't have to give Nintendo your money necessarily, but you know, it's going to be you know you're going to have to. You know, do a lot of tasks in order to get these leaf tickets. I think that there's only been one game that I can feasibly see that has come out that's been from a Nintendo or some affiliation of Nintendo where you actually had to pay actual money to get the actual game for. Not necessarily a pay to win, but a pay to like actually play. get the play. And that was Super Mario Run. Say, Mario, that's Mario the Run. only one that I've seen. Everything else has been like this, where it's like it's you can an enhancement, in yeah. not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, requirement. requirement. Yeah, it's like Fire Emblem Heroes. It is definitely not required to to pay any any money to get there. It, it helps because getting those heroes faster is the important thing. But um, I mean, they, you can definitely play basically all Nintendo's games for free, aside from Super Mario Run, which you buy it once and then you can play the whole game. So and I think you even got the whole update too. When yeah. they drop the update, you still get that. You get the update if you bought it already. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like you know. EA, where it's like they drop new DLC, and even Day if you have the, DLC, yeah. even if you have like the season pass or whatever, if they drop new DLC after that, it's just like yeah, yeah, you gotta pay for that. Yeah. So, but there will be seasonal events uh, in Pocket Camp, so you know it's it's stuff to get people to come back to playing if they take a break or you know the standard thing. Overwatch does the same thing. A lot of games do the same thing where they have seasonal stuff to get people excited about the game again, and I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like. Nice little things to say, hey, I know you're a loyal fan. Here's a thing for being a loyal fan. I, yeah. w- I wish the game was out now, because then we'd be able to get the... The Australian uh, ha- version is. The Halloween event. Yeah, but. the Australian version is. Uh, oh, that's true, that's true. A friend of mine in, uh, yeah, a friend of ours in 375 was playing the Australian version on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just got to go and oh, uh, go, go, go to iTunes and create an Australian account. Of course, yeah. And, on iTunes, and then you can download the game. So anyone, anyone, if you feel like going and getting the game, really, you just and I think go if you do it. in Google Play, it's even easier. Just change your your you change your location, I think. location, yeah. and then you just and then boom, you got your you got your Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Now here's something that I'm curious about. If you switch it back, do you still you have it? it? Yeah. Uh, who knows. That's know. a good question. It'll be something to try yeah, out. Question to do for science. But for those of you who don't want to be, who who are patient and can wait for uh, for the release of Pocket Camp, it's going to be available in late November, so it's not too far away. It's only a month out, mm-hmm. so it's really not that bad. And it's also going to be tied to the My Nintendo account for you guys, so you know you're going to be able to get items by using your My Nintendo points as well as missions in the things such as the other apps. Uh, and you know you're gonna be able to get the points for that, so that way it kind of bounces back and forth, and you're able to get you know special items from there. So we'll see about that. That'll be pretty good. I'm excited uh, to go and see that come out here in November. So. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. So here's something that's pretty interesting, and this is something that I like to see coming from you know a dev, mm-hmm. a developer. The Doom developer is actually disappointed with people just looking at the specs of of Doom on the Switch. And it's nice to see that actual game developers are understanding that people are being unrealistic with this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really become a problem. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's always been Nintendo's philosophy. Their thing, focus on fun. It doesn't have to be the greatest looking thing that will ever happen, ever, because then the next year you've got better technology and this amazing looking thing doesn't look so amazing anymore. Mm -hmm. They understand that High high def graphics will fade over time because the c- technology will get a be- get better, but the fun is what matters. See, this is my thing. Like, I'm one of those people that I don't need 150k at like two million frames yeah. per second to play the game. Like, clearly, I enjoy my games for different reasons mm-hmm. because you know I still go to Pokemon on the 3ds, I still go to Super Mario on the Wii U and on the, the NES and mm-hmm. all that. You know. It's yeah. like, all these people are like, oh, the graphics are everything, I gotta make sure that I can see the blood falling from my guy's nose at 50 yards. Mm-hmm. No! Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. ludicrous, and, and the amount of memory and resources to do that kind of stuff is absolutely unbelievable. 
And people people complain that they don't have money, and yet they'll shell out two thousand dollars to have the top mm. of the line everything to play the games at the top of the line graphics. And it's the game is still playable at seven twenty p, at ten eighty p, at you know four eighty. It's still playable. It might not look as crisp, but it's still playable. But mm. I mean, hey, look at all these indie games that are real popular that don't even use. You know these Uber Stardew people. Valley, yeah, yeah, Stardew Shovel Knight, they, they, Shovel Knight, yeah, they, the Hollow Knight also. They, I mean, a I do. I have a, I have a high powered PC. I do. The higher fidelity graphics, it, they're nice. I won't, I won't try and uh, disparage that having good graphics is a really b- good benefit to a game, but it's not necessary in any shape or form. Take I it. like it, but it's. Like it says here, like people need to. He's the developer says his thing. People need to focus on is it fun and does the gameplay feel good? Which first and foremost, that's what a game should be. I mean, a great example is Cuphead. Uh, Cuphead, it, yeah. Cuphead, well, is, Cuphead, like, Cuphead actually looks amazing though. But yeah. here's the thing, though, it's also designed to be like 1930s. Yeah, it's not like high, like hyper realistic stuff. It's mm-hmm. it's yeah. 1930s, you know, slapstick, like classic. Cartoon. Looney Tunes, it looks, it looks amazing, Disney classic shorts mm. like that. That was the design style. And again, it's not like oh, it's not 4K. It's not you know like a million frames per second. It's just you know classic 1930s art style mm. thrown into a game. And I yeah. think it's a really creative thing that they did, and it enhances the game itself. I don't think Cuphead would have been as good as it is. And as popular as it is, if it didn't use that style, you know what I mean? I agree. Bring Cuphead to Switch. <laughs> Dude, bring Cuphead to Switch. I would be so down for it. Oh, yeah. It's so, I, it's I, so good. I still need to play it. Oh, I played it I once. Just, a friend brought it in his laptop in game design, but... Oh, that game looks so good. And I love, like, the... That's, like, my favorite era of that, history yeah. ever. So, 20s and 30s are my favorite, so... Definitely love that style. I would hope one day to see that. Mm-hmm. So. Kind of a side point um, about Doom that uh, Adam Creighton mo- mentioned that the scalable technology uh, of the port made Doom a little bit more straightforward than it could have been, but it's still a wicked it's hard game. Hard, yeah. It's still hard as it was on PC, mm. Xbox, PS4. So that's pretty good for that. And, that, and Doom is a great game, and I'm really excited that it's coming to Switch. So, and it's just like uh, I was talking to a bunch of people last night at the release at Best Buy for mm-hmm. for Odyssey, for Odyssey, because Wolfenstein is coming out, and I'm like, yeah, Wolfenstein too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff dropping today. 2? Like I didn't fully realize how much was coming Assassin's out. Assassin's Creed came out today. Mm-hmm. As well, yeah. So I mean, a lot of games, and um, it's like I was talking to people, and it's like you know. I was saying, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wait for Wolfenstein. You know what? I don't need it on my PS4. I'm going to get it on the Switch. It's going to do the same basic thing. Plus, I'll be able to take it on the go. You know, that's, Right, exactly. And, and that's going to be... So, and I, I'm excited for Wolfenstein 2. Dude, Wolfenstein 2 looks great. Killing looks Nazis. So well, yeah, man. The best American thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be a true American, you got to go kill some Nazis. That's... That's... Uh, that, that, that is a uh, very interesting... I'll still give Wolfenstein 2 a try, though. It seems like it's going to be something be, to gonna be, delve it's gonna into. It's going to be a good time. I played both um, the New Order and the Old Blood, and they were both really great. So I'm really looking forward to uh, the new Colossus. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I'm in no way a, a saying in real life to do that. Just don't do not do that in real life. That's not a cool thing to do. Do, well, do, it, cool in to Wolfen- do, do it in Wolfenstein. Well, it's not cool to go and kill people. Well, kill people, but are Nazis people, though? I don't know. Uh, we'll not maybe. delve into that. This yeah. show is about Nintendo news. It's not we're about gonna politics. Talk about video we're going to change the subject now, and we're going to move on to something far less you're, dark. You're, you're excited. I, I, don't, I, see, I don't know. Uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are going to be it's pretty dark. dark it's looking like the so. sun is going away. Uh, Necrozma is stealing all their you, light. You, yeah. you and your buns. Mm. <laughs> yes. So we got some news coming out for that. We also are going to be, uh, for the next show, we'll be getting a buttload more of information because the uh, Nintendo Twitter of Japan just basically said, yeah, coming out on the 2nd, we're going to be throwing you a bunch of more information for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. 
and probably a video to wrap everything up that they have given off in terms of their news. So it's going to be pretty interesting. We're looking forward to that. But for the mm. time being, we have a couple points here. Uh, so points earned from Mantine Surf. Um, those are going to be able to be used to get items and have move tutors teach your Pokemon moves that they haven't learned um, or couldn't learn in last year's games. And, and as well as that, you've got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon's producer Shigeru Mori, noting that the latest 3D games can be thought of uh, mainly as a project for the younger staff to work on and grow their, their skills, while the veterans are going to be moving on to the upcoming Switch project. So... That's pretty cool that uh, you know Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is going to be a lot of you have a lot more younger developers for the Pokemon series in it. So I wanted I, I put that in there just kind of point out because I'm like oh, yeah I'm glad that you know we get a little bit a little more love for the younger guys mm-hmm. as well as you know the veterans going to be going on to move the Switch product so we know that it's going to be and, you know good. And I think that's smart to do it because then that's like it's a good send off for the 3DS because it's it's saying that hey we're almost done with this but we want to we've pretty much gotten everything that we can get out of the 3DS and now we're going to give it to the, the younger guys mm-hmm. and we're going to let them kind of take the reins and kind of learn the ropes and everything mm-hmm. and then we're going to take our experienced guys who are going to be working on a new platform that we've never experienced before, and they're going to be the ones that are going to take control in Lots that respect. Speaking of, you get you get these these new folks coming in, but they're not afraid to dig into nostalgia. Um, Team Rocket actually in the, in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, amazingly. Um, when you're uh, for the download card for uh, Ultra Shun, Ultra Sun shows a battle against a female Team Rocket grunt. Well, on Ultra Moon you've got a male, so. Team Rocket, man. I, I'm. That's the, very exciting to me. The thing, I like Team Rocket. The thing that I'm interested in is if it's actually if it it was an art point that they wanted to do, or because it's kind of like a rumor at this point. It's not confirmed, but it's also not denied. Hey, I'm, I am always going to be down for Team Rocket to show up. I'd rather it was Team Galactic, but. <laughs> it's team. It's Team Rocket. Is Team Rocket, and that's good for me. I mean, Team Rocket is literally everywhere. I mean, look yeah, at the anime. True. They've been they've been chasing after Ash for t- over twenty years. I've been chasing this kid since before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my favorite lines from the show because it's like, well, in the show, not really, but in <laughs> real life, actually, yes, <laughs> it has been longer than ten years. Indeed. Uh, uh, so, for those of you who are active players in Sun and Moon, which should be all of you Pokemon fans out there. Um, you can go to GameStop right now and get a download card with the little scratch off with the code for a shiny Silvali. Um, and that, that event is going on right now. So it's pretty cool. It's You know, we see those the frequency of those shiny Pokemon. They kind of pop up every now and again. And it's nice that, that they do stuff like that because then it gives like the younger folks an opportunity to say, hey, I have a shiny Pokemon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it also gives us older folks Say, huh, an opportunity to not. I have another not, shiny Pokemon. I have another shiny Pokemon, but also it's like I don't have to put forth the effort of sinking, you know, five, six, seven hours into, you know, uh, fish, pull fish, not or, shiny. Or use the Poke Radar. Yes, and because those chains are are very. I caught my first. Uh, I caught my first uh, shiny uh, a while back um, when I was I was replaying uh, Black and White. And I was doing a Nuzlocke challenge actually, and on a whim, I caught a shiny, um, a, a shiny, um, what's the uh, uh, per purloin? The, oh, the purple okay. Purple cat. It was a shiny one. It was it was cool. I was like, all right, hey, my first shiny, nice. Uh, my my first shiny was actually on accident. Mm-hmm. I was in White Forest in Pokemon White, and I just kind of walked through the grass. Boom, shiny Mareep. And I was like, oh! <laughs> I wasn't even playing when I got my first shiny. I handed it out to uh, my uh, my girlfriend's cousins, who are just like, I'm like, here, play some Pokemon. It'll be good for you. And I kind of look over, and he's battling a go-go, a shiny go-go. I'm like, give Catch me it. that! Catch no, I'm it. like, give me that right now! I need this right now! <laughs> God. Jeez, no, that like, like, they made my heart stop. I'm like, why is that go goat lime green? Give me, <laughs> give me, we gotta go. Oh, so. that is that is funny and that, so. that's good. So. Um, all right, so you are listening to Nintendo Bros on WUMD, and we are rolling on to the next topic. 
So, oh. so we've got a uh, the Japanese version of the Splatoon art book, um, which I, I love the art of Splatoon. It always it, it, it's it's such a creative IP that they made, and it's just it's very cool to see everything that they've got. Um, the uh, design wise, freaking who would have? Th- I never would have thought I'd be fighting a giant toaster as the first boss of Splatoon 2, but here we are. <laughs> 425 degrees of pain. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, so Play Asia will begin shipping the art book at the beginning of December. Um, it's the second volume of the Splatoon art book series, and it's got over 380 pages of artwork and designs, which is very cool. And it includes character sketches of both the the squids, the octopi, salmon. Uh, and all the other characters, concept art of the Capitalist Square, the battle stages, colorful graffiti, uh, user interface designs, various illustrations, environmental images, all from the world of Splatoon 2. Uh, and it all comes neatly wrapped in a cover illustration by the art director Shiota Inno and features the research results of the Icolab researchers that reveal the mysteries of Incopolis's flora and fauna. No word, unfortunately, when it's going to be coming over to the Americas, but something definitely to look forward to in the near future. I, I did I get could, the first one. I could see... Oh, the, the, they did release an American version of the first one? I'll have to go look and research into pick, maybe picking that up. Mm-hmm. That seems interesting, because I am a big Splatoon fan. It's like, it's like... For me, it's like Pokemon Splatoon Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. And Legend of Zelda and Splatoon can kind of flip-flop, basically, right, yeah. but they're pretty much... About the same. So, glad to see that is a uh, thing that they're still continuing with with all those art books as well. So, on to an end of an era for Lego Dimensions, unfortunately. The Twitter for Lego Dimensions just basically said, yeah, we're not going to be getting any more new packs for the future. Existing content will still be sold, however, uh, and, uh, and support will still continue to be provided, but there's not going to be anything new for Lego Dimensions. So, Thus is the end for that. We just got Disney Infinity gone away just a little bit ago, unfortunately. So uh, the uh, Lego Dimensions are now gone as well. And pretty much, I mean, you have a little bit with the Skylanders still kind of lingering around. But, but I think, honestly, the the effect has worn off with that stuff. I'll be honest. I really wasn't yeah. interested in the whole, you know, physical... Aside from Amiibo. Aside from Amiibo. Uh, but Amiibo is a different animal in and of itself. Because yeah. Amiibo is... is It's a collectible. It's and not they're definitely like, optional. Whereas thing, with things like Skylanders, you need, need them. you need them to play the game. Mm-hmm. Which is and very, unfortunately, very expensive very quickly. Yeah, unfortunately a lot of families don't have, you know, $400 to shell out to get every single Skylander. Right. And I mean, it just ends up being a problematic. It mm-hmm. just it. The concept was cool. It was a really great concept, but the implementation was not spot on. Yeah, I agree. So we'll, well see. We'll say goodbye to that uh, of right now. So another game that is literally on every other system is now coming to the Switch. It's Payday Two. Uh, so they're going to revamp the interface on the Switch for Payday 2, including you know usage of the touchscreen. So touchscreen integration, which we haven't seen on any Switch games yet, it's really nice to see that touchscreen integration yeah. finally start coming mm-hmm. forth. They're also going to be doing that with Li Noir as well. Oh, Very I nice. Doing it too. Nice. Yes. yes. Very so nice. So lot, it's nice to finally parties. see that you know nobody really knows that the Switch can you know you could touch hey, the it's Switch. A touch it's what a capacitive know? touch, so mm. you have the multi-touch yeah. ab- abilities, which is really nice. So be ready to go get your thermal drills because it's planning to launch this winter. So uh, go, go, just go, go, go rob those banks. Yeah, go get those heights on. A feature for all you iOS uh, users: we have a new. Uh, there's new Super Mario stickers available in iOS Messenger uh, in celebration of Super Mario Odyssey. Which is really cool. Um, Shovel Knight Amiibos are now available for pre-order. So Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight are available for pre-orders. And the expected release date, which looks like it's a tentative release date, is uh, New Year's Eve this year. So 2017, December 31st. Reggie actually does have a little bit of uh, information about talking about the NES Classic and the Switch availability, and I'll let w- one of you guys take each point uh, so that I'm not talking for long periods of time. <laughs> so, yeah, on the NES Classic, um, Reggie basically says, uh, quote, We know that there are many consumers who want the system and have not been able to purchase it. Currently, we're not 
happy to see the resellers on the, that system, and so bringing it back, it will help, you know, back in significant no numbers uh, is something that is important to us. So Reggie's Reggie knows that there's a bunch of scalpers out there, and he wants to kind of tank their market and say, hey, you know, it's not cool, man. Not cool. Buy the thing to play the thing. Don't buy the thing to sell, sell the, the thing. thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then on the Switch, he says, Whenever we launch a system, we place very high expectations on ourselves. I wish we would have had more hardware. Our inability to meet demand is not something that is satisfying in any way, shape, or form, and we're working hard to satisfy as much demand as possible. Yeah, so they're really trying to move units. I, I know Switches, Switches are, I believe, like readily available nowadays, right? More yeah, or less right? in the Americas. In Japan, it's still a little... Japan bit is still... It's still, still hard bad. pressed to buy. I don't know Man. about NOE though. Yeah. Europe, yeah, I don't know about Europe, but I know, I know around here, like you, people have been able to pick. If you want a switch, you can get a switch now. It's not impossible to find one. And it's really nice to see that they're finally getting a headway on the on the yeah you know the stock of it. And on the other side of it, it's also you know the first waivers are also starting to peter off. So the people who are like, I am a Nintendo fan and I must have this within the first year, those kind of people are starting to taper yeah. off. Well, are they? They've already gotten it now. But on the other side of it, we're going to be seeing, you know, it's ta tapering off for now, but we have three weeks before that big old sale comes along that everybody talks about, and it might have an involvement of color and a certain day of the week, and it might just be the it's day coming. after Thanksgiving. So. That might be actually when I pick up Odyssey, so. because, uh, you know, mm. I, I'm broke right now. Yeah. <laughs> for, all, for all you lucky folks with money, today's the day. And speaking speaking of that uh, that the very game. the great game, Super Mario Odyssey does launch today, um, and we do have an infographic here, and I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire as fast as I can all of these reviews. Edge, ten out of ten. Giant Bomb, five out of five. Uh, GameSpot, 10 out of 10. IGN, 10 out of 10. Eurogamer, Essential. Game Informer, 9.75 out of 10. Polygon, 9.5 out of 10. USA Gamer, 5 out of 5. Area Jagones, whatever that is, 10 out of 10. Games Radar Plus, 5 out of 5. Famitsu, 39 out of 40. Press Start, 10 out of 10. The Sixth Axis, 10 out of 10. And Guardian, 5 out of 5. As well as Metacritic, 97 out of 100. Yep. So. Uh, t currently tied with Breath of the Wild on Metacritic. And then I believe my game rankings is sitting at like a 98.9, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or like 98.7. It's this game is getting very, very good reviews, and for it seems a very good reason. This game looks phenomenal. I mean, I'm like, very excited to not be able to play it from. <laughs> these these are just uh, these are just some of the quotes that have been been said. Super Mario Odyssey is a fever dream of creativity and joy. It's a warm hug in a sea of darkness. From Waypoint. From Ars Technica, if you have a Switch, get this game. If you don't have a Switch, get one and then get this game. <laughs> Uh, oh, from so Games good. Beat, you've got this is another Mario all time classic that'll be remembered and celebrated for decades to come. And from VG247, Odyssey is the best Mario game in many, many years. And while it returns to the N64 style formula, its triumphs are firmly its own. <clears throat> this game looks so, so good. I mean, let's put it, let's be frank and just say what it is. This game is the game that needed to come out this time like of year. Like right now, yeah. Because this is the game that people from the Super Mario 64 era are going to enjoy. This is the game that people who are completely old time, new. long time fans of Mario, completely new, this is something that people are going to get into. Yeah. And it's really the. The way that they made this game and the way that they've gone about presenting it is in such a way that is so whimsical, it's so quintessentially Mario that mm. not having this game on the Switch is a missed opportunity, yeah. honestly. I mean, if you if you video game, you have played a Mario game yeah. at some point. There's just no way of getting around that. Yeah. It's it's basically impossible to find someone who's not played Mario in some form or another. So, and if you have, this is another game that you definitely need to play. Uh, it, I was playing probably about an hour last night, and oh my gosh, I'm, I'm enjoying it so much. I, it's just even little features like when I put, look, went to look at the map, it the map of the area actually has, it's like a brochure, like you're actually traveling. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> like, that's that, awesome. Those are just like little details that I'm like... Oh, this is so cute! Like, oh, this is so great! I love this! This I is am, neat! I am on an adventure. I am traveling to different places. This is so cool! 
And oh, then a poster uh, is literally getting confined to the forces of gravity. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's it's been really cool. And Nintendo Action NY, when they had their event right there at uh, uh, the store, actually had kind of like a flash mob of Jump Up Superstar, and it actually featured Jordan Fisher from the from Hamilton from Hamilton yes. on Broadway. So that's that's actually really cool. Um, glad that Mario Odyssey is a thing. I'm 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 excited for it. I'm happy for it. I'm yeah, it looks it looks it's so fun. good. So we got a couple little yep. talking points uh, to wrap up the show. Do you guys think it's going to be beat out Breath of the Wild and take that Ooh. game of the year spot? I don't know. They're really different games. Um, I don't know how fair it is to compare. My, yeah, my, it really, my thing with it is Breath of the Wild's been out far longer, so people have had the chance to play it with Odyssey. You're not going to get that, especially well, towards the end get, of the you year. You got a couple months. Yeah, you got a couple months yeah, to get it. You have a little bit of there. time, but. Typically, in you know the fashion, just of the trends of the past, you have more of the games that came out in the beginning of the year that are going to you know have you know game of the year. Yeah. So I I think if they do game of the year, I don't think it's going to be 2017. But Super Mario Odyssey, because of the time that it's released, it very may it well could they could qualify and quantify it as a 2018 game. Mm. I mean, they could do like you know like they do with cars and bring out the next year's model in September. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I think it's going to be. I think if the it will definitely get game of the year in an aspect of you It'll, know the game of the year. At least, I think at least a couple places, a couple uh, outlets will give it game of the year. I think but that's definitely. But I don't. I don't think it's going to necessarily beat out Breath of the Wild. I think they'll be pretty. They'll probably be on the same scale. To be fair, though, it's been a really good year for games, Nintendo and otherwise. You've got things like Horizon Zero Dawn that people are talking about as possibly Game of the Year. Mm-hmm. You've got, um... Oh, shoot, what else came out this year that was really Persona good? 5. Persona 5 came out this year, which also fantastic game. Mm-hmm. You got, there were a lot of really good games this year. There's a lot of strong contenders for Game There's of the Year There's definitely stiff competition. Hmm. Um, and kind of on the other side, this is kind of a not-so-great point. Apparently Mario Odyssey doesn't bring joy to everyone who plays it. Um, so a YouTuber in Hong Kong got banned for three months for streaming the game, um, but to, qual- to qualify this, they got the game from the retailer early, legally, so I guess there was somebody said, hey, here, buy this. Nintendo removed the, vi- the video, uh, but, you know, the YouTuber didn't send, yeah. they didn't do an, any NDAs with Nintendo, so kind of, on this, so on this point, I say... It's his fault because he didn't yeah. wait. For one, he didn't wait. But two, it's like, I mean, you're not part. You're not with Nintendo on this, so you're, right. you're gonna get content striked. And if you're, if you don't realize this by now, and I mean, we've been talking about this for several weeks about this issue with Nintendo. If you don't know about that and you're not cautious about that. I mean, it kind of falls into your into your hands. It's like, what? What's the what's the thing? Like, what? Why are you continuing to be reckless with what you're doing? Mm-hmm. So, That's poor guy. Fair. Yeah, poor guy. I mean, it's like I just wanted it, to play some Mario. It's it's bad. I mean, I feel bad for him that he got banned. But on the other side of it, it's like, dude, you you kind of brought it on yourself. Yeah. I mean, you know. Oh, it's, well. it's neither here nor there. Well, but I mean, at least he got to play some Mario Odyssey, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's got. The at game, least so. he still There's has Mario Odyssey. Odyssey. He, has Mario Odyssey he still There's has always Mario the, Odyssey. Always the upside. He just can't show people that he's playing it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For three months. Yeah. Alrighty. It could have been a lot harsher too. Only three months is uh, not too bad. Mm-hmm. It's not too bad. So. Glad Odyssey's out. I'm going to be going home immediately after this and going to go play that. Have tomorrow. fun. It's going to be. Be a lot of fun. I'm I'm excited for what it uh, what it can be. Even even just like the beginning part, the tutorial. It just it felt so like I don't know. It was good. It was fast. That you know because I like fast tutorials. It was good. Showed me what I needed to do. Went and beat one of the uh, rabbit bosses that or the tailor or the wedding planner for Bowser. So that's right. I forgot. <laughs> I, that's right, I forgot. Uh, the rabbits have found their way into another game apparently yeah. <laughs> under under a different name. But man, yeah. Mario and the rabbits—they really want these crossover. They're really pushing this crossover. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, glad to go and have that out. Mm. So that's about it from us for this uh, this week's show. Uh, as always, I appreciate and we appreciate everybody who is listening in. Um, this show and the others that are not yet on YouTube will be on YouTube 
very soon. We're going to make sure that those get taken care of. We're going to throw those links up on our Facebook page, so make sure you guys like us on there to get all the updates and information about the show. Uh, and, of course, subscribe to us, Nintendo Bros Show, on YouTube uh, to keep up to date with those shows that you missed or maybe didn't get the whole show. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. And, uh, as always, I'm Chris. I'm Noah. And I'm Josh. And we are the Nintendo Bros. Remember to game on.